Just want to welcome everyone to the Stacey A. Cross podcast show. <laughs> Whether you're listening now or later, it is always the perfect time. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. 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 Are you a comfort killer? Great afternoon, Comfort Killers. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. You're listening to the Stacey A. Cross Show every noon on a Thursday. And guess what? I know you love it. I know you hear it. It's back, the intro. I took a brief hiatus from the intro to just go in and say, plow, plow. Uh, Matter of factly and honestly, I was on my other computer. So when I'm on this computer, you get the full-blown you know, high energy intro. And when I'm on the other computer, I'm like, bro, I just press record on voice recorder and get this thing going. You got to get up, get out and get it done in any format. And that's what this show is about today. I'm giving you, I'm bringing to you a piece, a segment, uh, a little brief from my audio book. This is taken strictly out of the comfort killers, your journey to success, how to change your life using tools. You already have the book, but did you know I created an audiobook too? And did you know that audiobook is exclusive to those that purchase my book and those that have purchased a signed copy of my book and or gotten the journal in a pack? Do you want to know where to get that? I'm going to tell you right now. It's thecomfortkillersbook.com, thecomfortkillerbook.com, thecomfortkillerbook.com. You can go and I give you the audio book right away, straight away. You get the audio book and then boom, in the mail, you get a personalized signed copy of my newest book, how to change your life using tools you already have. Now, why did I want to tell you about how to get up, get out and get it done? Because it's very important as a comfort killer or as anyone that wants to change their life completely do the 180. The other thing that we used to do, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. The other thing that we used to do was stay there, lay there. Okay, we didn't get up. First of all, we jumped up for other people. And as you're going to learn in this chapter, is it chapter five? I believe it's chapter five of my book. You're going to learn that we do that for the other people anyway. We do that for our boss. We do that for our moms. Hey, get up. I need you to go to the grocery store for me. Okay, mom, I'm up. Okay, but when it comes to ourselves, we don't have that same urge. We don't have that same burst of energy. So what I teach you in this chapter is as a comfort killer, it's our manifesto to get up, get out and get it done. So when I recorded in the other computer just to get it done, I got up, I got out and got it done, right? I wasn't sitting there like, oh, I'm not going to put the podcast out because I don't have the right tools. I don't have the right computer. I don't have the right. No, 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 bro, shut up. I don't want to hear any excuses, okay? Especially coming from myself, right? If I don't want to hear from anyone else, I really don't want to hear from myself. So I just get up, get out, get it done. So what have you been procrastinating on? This chapter will help you out today and I'll teach you the Comfort Killers Manifesto. But aside from the Comfort Killers Manifesto, I hope you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, The Comfort Killers, YouTube, youtube.com slash The Comfort Killers. Go over there right now before you get into the meat of this and before you start learning how to get up, get out, and get it done. I want you to go over to YouTube and subscribe to my channel because there is a new show there and it's called Trust the Process. So you're ready for that. You know, I, I said I was going to do a Wednesday, Friday. It's a Friday show now. Friday show. Just because, hey, my time, man, my time is so valuable. I hope you know that your time is valuable. Get the book so you can know how much your time is valuable. We, we break down time in my book as well. The Comfort Killers, Your Journey to Success, How to Change Your Life Using Tools You Already Have. Suppose you go on the website and you're like, Stace, you know, I don't need a signed copy from you, bro. And I'm like, okay, well, why the hell not? Why wouldn't you want a signed copy from me? But all right, I understand it. Let's say you want to go to Amazon.com or you want to go to Barnes and Nobles. Just type in The Comfort Killers, Your Journey to Success, and my book will pop up. I know you know the cover of my book. It has my crazy face, my crazy staple, the mouth open wide, and it says right there, huge in bold print, The Comfort Killers. Without further ado, let me get into this chapter, chapter five of my book, Get Up, Get Out, and Get It Done. I hope you enjoy it, and at the end of this, please kick 
click the link in the description, go purchase the book, do yourself a favor, do your energy a favor, do your consciousness a favor, do prosperity a favor, do abundance a favor, do your life a favor and go get a copy of my book. Go purchase that and I'll see you later. I will not be coming back on. I'm going to end it with my audiobook. See you later. Let me know what you think. Hello at the comfort Peace. Chapter five, get up, get out, get it done. The Comfort Killers Manifesto is to get up, get out, and get it done. This is a no excuse, no holes barred approach to attacking your day and going after your dreams in life, even if you have no idea what these dreams are yet. It begins with a rude awakening, a morning routine laced with personal development, and a slew of activity that'll drive the average person insane. This is how I conquered my fears over time by building confidence in my work ethic and discipline. Writing this book is a form of discipline. You want to know what else takes massive amount of discipline, hard work, and consistency? Going to the same dead-end job for 30 years. That takes crazy work ethic to wake up daily, hating every minute of it, but doing it daily, living for Friday nights and holiday parties. Lately, I felt underwhelmed at my place of employment. That is because I set a date to get the hell out of there. Day in and day out, we punch the clock without even questioning its mechanics and work on someone else's dream and passions while ignoring our own passions and desires. I've worked for someone else for 18 years and I've had it. I've been fired from four of the six jobs I've held in my lifetime and I quit the remaining two. I am unemployable. I go into an establishment with the intention of having a good secure job to pay my bills and having a little fun on the side. The problem was I didn't get paid enough to cover basic living expenses or I was bored out of my freaking mind. I was a rebel employee. Maybe you're the type too. The type of employee that never seems to follow directions and orders from someone else. I didn't want anyone telling me what to do, and I just hated the politics of climbing the ladder. I was different. There's millions just like me who, for the life of them, cannot figure out why they think differently. When you try to box them in, they resist. When you try to silence them, they speak louder. These characteristics were the beginning stages of defining what I would do in life. I couldn't go back to music and I wasn't going to be someone who worked and retired broke without any options. The manifesto, get up, get out and get it done was the first thing I activated after converting myself from a gambler to an entrepreneur. It is the same manifesto that I live by today and will continue to live by until my days are ended on planet earth. It has worked for me and I know implementing this action concept will work for you too. Get the F up. It starts with you getting up. I mean, there's no other way of me explaining this process other than telling you, you got to get the F up. Yes, with an exclamation point. When I didn't care about anything and my life wasn't fulfilling because I had zero goals and aims, I woke up and lay there. I turned on the TV from the bed and chilled out for another hour or so until the tiredness wore off. It was so damn dismal in the mornings. First off, I didn't have an alarm clock. My natural wake up would be about 10 and 11 in the morning if I didn't have to work. When I worked, I would jump up because I was always late. I want you to notice something here. When I had to go to work, I would jump up because I was late which meant that I had the ability to jump up for myself, but I never did. I was a slave jumping up for an employer, another person, or a boss. How many times do you jump up for other people, but you stay in bed for yourself? That's the problem. We don't get going because we don't have the same push to do something we cannot see yet. That hasn't been created yet. That doesn't exist yet. We can't jump up because there's no reason to. This is when you must do it. When we get up, get up because we are the owners of our time. And we have set a schedule for ourselves because we have decided to take control back. 
Some of you reading may have tough work schedules and can't jump up every day. My question to you is, what about your days off? What about any other time you are not working? Ah, Stacy, you didn't have to work. Please. I worked 40 to 50 hours a week and put in another 20 to 30 on my business right from the start. Right from Jump Street. There are 168 hours in a week. If 50 of those is for work and 56 are for sleep, depending on an average of 8 hours a night, then you are left with 62 hours for life. Let's subtract another 3 hours per day as a cushion for showering, getting dressed, cleaning, and eating. Now we are down to 41 hours left in the week. Ah, why not subtract another 2 hours for school or kids or commute per day? Now you're looking at 27 hours left in a week for life. What are we doing with our time? This is about getting up and getting your day started before the sun is up. This is about squeezing more hours out of the day that you are wasting. This is about jumping up with enthusiasm and determination for a goal. You have four hours on average per day to get started on you. Here is a quote from Conrad Hilton. To some degree... You control your life by controlling your time. End quote. Here's a quote by me. Get up, get out, and get it done. Get the F out. After you jump up, you're going to need something to do. I like writing and creating, so I did that. Then I started to create more and more. I noticed I was getting better at it. I was dedicated to making a name for myself. When you get out, you are getting out of your comfort zone by doing things you normally wouldn't do. You are learning a new language. You're watching programs teaching you some new skills. Maybe you're working on your body through fitness or maybe you're reading. Whatever it is you are doing, it will be unnatural and hard. You will become super distracted. You want to look at your phone or worse, you'll feel the urge to go back to bed. Fight it. You already achieved the hardest part of this cycle. You got the F up. The rest is downhill. This was my morning routine when I got totally uncomfortable. One, get out of bed immediately. Don't think twice. Two, 20 sit-ups, 20 push-ups, 20 jumping jacks. Three, write down my goals and write in my journal. Four, take a cold-ass shower. Five, listen to the morning meditation for 10 minutes. Six, read one chapter for 30 minutes. Seven, write an article. This is all before 8 a.m. This all happened before most of America got out of bed. I would control my time and work on my personal development. It felt great, and after some time, it was a discipline. Write a list of tasks you can fill your two to three hour block with. Maybe you want to write a book, record a podcast, start a business. You could do it every day like clockwork. And just like clockwork, the universal law will support you. Are you interested in knowing what all the universal laws are? There are 50 primary universal laws. The universe is perfectly balanced by natural and moral laws. Work with them, be assured of eventual positive results. Work without them and find struggle. If you want more information on these universal laws, invest time learning and observing each of them. My mentor, Dick Stutfin, will support your interests in this journey if you choose to search. In the book, I listed all 50 universal laws. In the audio book, I will not go into that. Go ahead and purchase that book and uh, just go on the website, thecomfortkillers.com. I'll list them there if you want all 50. I believe in sending individuals exactly what their hearts desire. And since you are attractive in the universe, you are most likely asking how people can increase their spirituality and abundance, but had no clue where or how to start. Well, I've just played a key part in your universe and reality. You've attracted me. I know that many reading this book are probably wondering to themselves, what the hell is Stacy talking about? Because they do not consider themselves spiritual. In fact, you don't subscribe to anything other than what you already know. Maybe that's the problem. Your mindset also has its comfort zone and your ego will react with opposition to anything that will teach it to relinquish control. Maybe you need more spirituality in your journey. Maybe you need to connect with your higher self. It's not spacey, it's consciousness. And you need tons of it if you want to start and grow a business. 
You need to develop the true you, the real you, because the person you've been dragging around your entire life doesn't represent love, abundance, and freedom. Take a month, meditate, and see what happens. I challenge you. Get it done. My short manifesto is simple. We got up, then we got out of our comfort zones, and now we need to complete the cycle of getting it done. The reason why getting it done is important is because you will feel so good when the thoughts in your head are materialized in the physical universe, just like this book. Everything you complete is a product. An incomplete product cannot be used. Let's take a deeper look at this concept. When you tie your shoes and they are nice and tied, it is a completed product. A half-completed product is not a product. It is an attempt. When we leave things attempted or half-completed, we get confused, which causes doubt. When we ask ourselves a bunch of questions, we also get confused. Doubt turns into apathy, and then you're back to square one. Remember that square peg at square one? You're right back there. The moment you start completing tasks and activities, the full way through is when you'll start feeling good. You will notice you are happier and fulfilled. You will notice more energy surrounds you to get even more done. Therefore, an author rarely writes just one book. The athlete never wants to retire. They love the feeling of completed activities and additional opportunities to do it all over again. Why? Because it feels good. This is my first book. I already have two more in mind. Matter of fact, I started both and it has been bothering me ever since. It has been nudging at me. If I completely quit, then I will never confront where a certain feeling of doubt is coming from. If you are in doubt, it is because you have incomplete projects or half-finished products. Tie up the loose ends and get it done. Another thing to note about products is that you could sell and exchange completed products for support, money, other products, or value. There's really no telling where you could stop. You write an article and complete it, it is a product on your website or blog, you can exchange it for support. People will read it and they will share it to their network. Now you have value. You wouldn't be able to do that if it's still in draft mode. Think about the coffee shop in your neighborhood. What if every morning you went for a hot cup of coffee, the baristas turn to you and say, hey, we didn't finish making the coffee. It's incomplete. There's no exchange. They don't get your dollars. You go to another shop that has completed products. Whatever it is you intend to do, you must put everything into it. You have got to finish that thing. If there's something that you are stopping, then you had better come to terms with why you are stopping this thing and end it knowingly. Do not even look back at it. It's super funny because in the past, I would start and stop a bunch of things. I started, stopped a hip hop newsletter. I started, stopped a mail order clothing business. I started, stopped my music interest. I started, stopped a clothing brand. I will be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I learned this principle the hard way. I am appreciative of the experience I gained from each of my ventures of the past, but I sure fucked up my mindset by ingraining this start, stop, quitter attitude in my subconscious over the years. Do you see why it was easier for me to attract challenges? I am always being tested, and so are you. It's about learning. Planners and journals. There is no substitute for adopting the Comfort Killers Manifesto without documenting it. There just isn't. I'm happy to say that I can open old journals and see exactly how far I've come on this journey. I can pinpoint where shifts took place and note where my mindset wasn't there yet. No one is going to tell your story better than you. How could they? They didn't live it. And like it or not, your memory is going to fade faster than that old jean jacket you have in the closet from the 90s. Just throw it out, man. That is why I recommend writing everything down. Supplement that with recording your voice too. Remember, this is for you and no one else. Get real with yourself and speak your mind. If you think you are not growing because you cannot see tangible results, just listen to yourself three months later. You're going to be amazed. The first product that I created for my company were journals. I don't encourage writing about your girlfriend, boyfriend, breakup stories in there, but I do implore you to write what matters. If love matters, go ahead, write about it. It's your story, not mine. 
Another area I had to step up in was scheduling my day to a T. If you do not have a platter, go get one quick. The kind that breaks down the hours within the day. Schedule everything the night before, just before you go to bed. Your focus should be planning the next day. At first, I realized I was putting way too much in my daily planner, trying to knock out multiple projects throughout the day. It failed. As I was jumping around too much to try to accomplish one task fully. Now, I plan my day by projects. I would write my book during an eight-hour block, and that would be it for the day other than a few phone calls for my business and posting a couple things on social media. This technique was more effective for me. In the past, I would write for two hours, then write articles for one hour, then schedule social media posts for 30 minutes, then block out two hours for updating the website, and two hours for sales, one hour for podcasting, etc. It was getting too hectic and disorganized. So now, I focus on one main objective for the day and inject small tasks that require a few minutes of my attention. What I notice now is that I am clearer and I know precisely what I am going to do for the day. If something pops up, I'm in control to say no or adjust my calendar to it. Begin your journey with a journal. There's no coincidence that the spelling is similar. When are you going to start? Are you going to wait another year complaining and blaming everyone else for your lack of ownership? If you haven't written anything in a journal before and don't have one of those things, do this now. One, grab a sheet of paper. Two, write the date at the top of the page. Three, write down three things you're grateful for. Four, write down what successes look like to you. Five, write down three goals you have or new goals you want to achieve. Six, write a date at the bottom of the paper. Welcome to your new journal. Now keep track of your progress.